In this lecture, I will be reviewing how to use table F or the solubility rules to predict whether or not a precipitate occurs and also evaluate the solubility of compounds in general using those solubility rules that we have listed in table F for our convenience in some courses across the country you don't have solubility rules given to you but we do so uh, let's get started so what I have here is the starting of two double uh, starting of a double replacement reaction and this one I did in class for you and before we get started with predicting the products and seeing if in fact a precipitate does occur we have to evaluate whether this will re react and, and talk about this so as I did in class let's look at this the name of this of course is lead and we're going to write Roman numeral 2 here for lead 2 because each lead, each nitrate ion from table E is negative 1. And you have two of them, so each lead has to be plus 2. And since lead has multiple charges, this is lead 2 nitrate. And this, of course, is potassium using the IUPAC naming system. And because it's binary, it ends in IDE, so this is iodide. Okay. Now, we're starting with lead 2 nitrate and potassium iodine, and we're trying to um, make a double replacement reaction occur, which means we're trying to see if, in fact, a precipitate occurs. And sometimes they call this, does the reaction go to completion? And I'll go over that as we get there. Any case, let's go to our solubility rules, or table F, okay, and see if, in fact, potassium nitrate is soluble. Because if it's not soluble, it's going to stay as a solid, and it's no way its ions can double replace with Ki. So let's go to table F. And boom, there it is, okay. So table F in all its glory. And these are the solubility guidelines, or solubility rules. And if you remember, we had lead to nitrate. Now, lead to nitrate, well, it's Pb... NO3, and we need two of them. Okay, so let's lead to nitrate. Now, look what it says here. Nitrate is NO3 minus, and it's under the solubility area. So clearly, anything with a nitrate is soluble. And you may say, well, why? Well, you have four atoms that are negative one. They're, you're stretching out a negative one over four atoms. That negative one can't be strong, so water can break apart the solid. And that's part of the way you can think about it, but nitrates, anything with a nitrate soluble. So lead nitrate must be soluble, which means it dissolves as ions. So what that means is we put aqueous here. Now what aqueous, not AG, aqueous, aqueous means that we are soluble. But what it really means is that these things can break apart into ions. All right, so this will break apart into a lead plus two ion. and two nitrate ions. So if you notice, we will have free ions. Now, of course, what you're going to have is the water uh, surrounding these ions. For instance, in lead plus two, don't forget, you're going to have those molecule ion attractions where the negative part of water surrounds them. So when I say free ions, I mean that they're, they're free from their crystal position, but you're still going to have attractions with waters. So the bottom line here is that we have okay these f ions that are free from their crystal arrangement and that they're floating around in the water to make a homogeneous mixture we call a solution now we like to write them together in the formula but as I always say it's a um, it's not really true okay it's like a, a bad wedding they're not really together why because these guys break apart into free ions but essentially aqueous means you have these ions in solution that are free. Ki, is this soluble? Can I write an aqueous? So I go to table T. And here I am. So Ki, or potassium iodide, well, is a group 1 ion. Potassium is a group 1 ion. It's an alkali metal, so it's in the first column, and everything that's in the first column is soluble. And you may say, well, why? Well, if you're plus 1, you have a low charge to begin with, but big atoms, okay, will make big ions. Yes, you lose an electron, you get smaller, but generally these atoms are so big and their plus 1 is stretched out of a large area, they don't attract themselves in crystals very well so water can break them apart. So Ki is soluble because it has a group 1 ion. It's also soluble because iodine 
is also soluble. There are some exceptions, which mean that if you had these two with the iodine, they would be insoluble. But because we just have K, okay, it's soluble based on these rules. Have potassium, have a group one ion, game is over, it is soluble. Just like the nitrates. If you have a nitrate, there's no exceptions, so therefore game is over. Okay, so this I write aqueous as well because according to the rules, it's aqueous. And what does this mean? This means that K plus and my I negative are free ions. Again, they are surrounded by the different parts of the water, but they are free from their crystal positions. So these, so when I, if I have a solution in a beaker of Ki and I have another beaker with sodium nitrate, as in my demonstration, as I'm showing you, okay, then then these guys are not together. It's a bad wedding. They're really free ions, okay floating around if they're aqueous according to our rules. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pour these guys together. We're going to mix okay, these ions with these ions. So what we write in chemistry normally is we say, okay, well, the positive ion, which we said lead is plus 2, so Pb is plus 2 in this case, nitrate is negative 1, K is plus 1, Iodine is negative one, and what we're going to say is this lead is going to hook up with this iodine, okay, just by chance, and we write it as a double replacement reaction, as you probably have done, and Pb is plus two, iodine is negative one, so you're going to have to crisscross two iodines for one, and if you're not seeing, it's a good idea to rewrite the ions, Pb is plus two, iodine is negative one, and what you're going to do is do the crisscross, and you need two iodines. So I put a two here. What else am I going to have? Well, the positive K plus should hook up with the positive NO3. They're just going to switch and double replace. So I have the positive one goes in front. That's my K. And as I said, it's positive one. K, the nitrate, NO3 is minus one. And if you don't know, table E is your friend in this region's chemistry course. And we put NO3 right next to it. It's a one-to-one. -one. If you want to crisscross, you'll see it's clearly one-to-one. -one. The whole idea of naming or making chemical formulas is to make sure that we're electrically neutral. If one lead plus two is plus two, and there's one iodine, it's negative one. You'll need two of them. Since one of these is plus one, since it's negative one, it's a one-to-one. -one. Okay, before we get started, let's balance this reaction okay and it's very helpful when you balance reactions that you consider okay that the polyatomic ions stay together it makes your life easier okay you could do it individual atoms but if you have polyatomic ions that are clustering together staying together throughout the reaction then it's easier to treat them as a single element so if I look at this reaction I have two nitrates over here treating this as a single entity I have one nitrate over here so to get two nitrates I put a coefficient of two here this gives me two K's. I put a two here to balance my potassiums. This, by the distributive property, gives me two iodines. I have two iodines, and I have one lead, one lead, and the conservation of mass has been upheld. I have balanced the reaction, and I can put ones in here to remind myself that they, that includes a one. Okay, I'm not done yet. Okay, I have to now evaluate whether or not these compounds are soluble or insoluble. Okay. So let's go with potassium nitrate and go to table F. Okay, so we're looking for potassium nitrate, whether or not this is soluble. Well, as we've seen before, potassium is a group one ion that's always soluble. And if we don't like that, the nitrate ion in the compound is always soluble too. So all you need to find is one part of the compound that's soluble and it makes the entire thing soluble. So for two reasons, here and here, this chemical is definitely soluble. I don't need two reasons. One would be fine. So potassium nitrate is soluble. Let's go back. So because it's soluble, I'm going to write an AQ here. That tells me it does mix. And what does it scream? Hey, my ions are free, people. I've got K plus hanging out. NO3 minus hanging out. Okay? Well, it's not really hanging out. We know the water is attached to it somewhat in molecule ion attractions, but they're not in a crystal. They're not um, sitting in the bottom of the beaker undissolved. 
Okay, so you write the aqueous. Let's now look at our final one, lead iodide, PBI2, lead 2 iodide. So now we're looking for lead 2 iodide. That's PBI2. Is this soluble? I look through my, my list and I see no lead. But I see iodine, and iodine is soluble. But there are exceptions, and my friends in chemistry, lead plus 2, which is in this compound, is an exception, meaning iodine is normally soluble except with these three. So this is one of them. So this makes lead iodide insoluble. So what I do here, party people, is I put a solid here. It doesn't mean soluble. It means it makes a solid. And that means a solid comes out. You guessed it. Two clear solutions, okay, two clear solutions that are both have free ions. When you pour them together, you're going to see a solid come out. Why? Because the when the iodine, let's do it with the color, when the iodide ion hits the lead just by chance of pouring they stick together and form a crystal lattice of PB plus 2 attracting an iodide ion and they make that crystal structure now it's not exactly like this oops but it is a crystal formation that has a regular re a regular repeating arrangement okay and just by showing you that we have these ions that are existing in this arrangement and they are they rather stick together because of the great charges they or attractions they the coulomb attractions they have for each other then become free so that's the solid you see you can't see through it so if you look at my demonstration that i have linked here you can see that i pour two clear liquids but when the lead plus two and the iodine free ions collide they prefer themselves than water and they come out as a solid, a pretty yellow precipitate. The liquid above has the K+. Plus. So we would say that, yes, a precipitate has arrived here. PPT is short for precipitate, meaning a solid has occurred. And we'd also say that this reaction has reached completion. Now, what does that mean, reached completion? Well, I'm going to think about it two ways. If you make a precipitate, the reaction can't go in the reverse. These, these ions are locked. So it keeps going forward until you run out or complete the reaction. Another way to think of it, this was a reaction. If there was no precipitate and you had free ions on both sides, nothing happened. But because we locked up one of the ion pairs, then the reaction kept going to the right. So there was a reaction. So if you make a precipitate, you have reached completion and there was a reaction. Okay, so let's go back and look at some of your homework now. Okay, so in your homework, I'm asking you to do the first two of these. And uh, I want you to write the word equations, which are pretty simple. The positive ones are in front. Oops, I don't want that big one. Okay, and the negative ones are in the back. It's a double replacement, so we're going to have aluminum. The positive one is in front. The negative one lags. Okay, so this positive hooks up with this negative, so we're going to have aluminum hydroxide and then we're going to have barium bromide that's what I'm asking now you have to write the chemical formulas okay based on the words we've had that skill you have to balance and then after you do that you have to evaluate each chemical to see if in fact it's soluble or not will this reaction produce a precipitate that's what these questions are are you gonna see a solid come out okay so if you do aluminum bromide you should see that aluminum from your periodic table likes to become plus three the bro ID ending tells me it's just binary so it's BR okay I look up BR it likes to become negative one so I crisscross and I get AL BR three okay barium likes to become plus two Hydroxide from table E, it's a polyatomic ion, is negative 1, crisscross, and I get BaOH2. Now, I need 2 in the parentheses. Now, I have to evaluate these. Let's do barium hydroxide. Let's go to table E to see if, in fact, it's soluble. 
So we look for hydroxide, and hydroxides are normally insoluble. There are some exceptions. And look at this, barium is an exception. So barium hydroxide is what? It's normally insoluble for hydroxides, but barium is an exception. So barium hydroxide is soluble, so we write aqueous. So I write aqueous right here, AQ. What about aluminum bromide? Let's go to table F to see to evaluate that. Well, there's no aluminum listed. Bromide is a halogen. It's normally soluble. Aluminum is not an exception, so aluminum bromide is soluble. So we write aqueous, meaning they are free ions. We write them together, but they're not really together, right? Pour them together, and they're going to double replace. Well, this positive aluminum is going to hook up with this hydroxide that's negative 1. If aluminum is negative, aluminum is plus 3, and hydroxide is negative 1, to make it a neutral compound, you need three of these. And then barium is positive, so that goes in front. And then we're what? We are hooking up with the bromide, who's negative. Bromide's negative 1. Barium is plus 2. So when you crisscross, or to make a neutral compound, you need two bromides for one barium. Now let's evaluate aluminum hydroxide. So aluminum hydroxide, hydroxides are normally insoluble. Aluminum is not one of the... Aluminum is not one of the exceptions, so aluminum hydroxide is insoluble. That's your precipitate. So aluminum hy hydroxide is insoluble. We write a solid here. Barium bromide, well, as we keep seeing, bromides are soluble because they're halogens. Exceptions are silver, lead plus 2, and mercury. And mercury is HG. I can't write it here, but HG. So these are listed so this is soluble so we write aqueous so we do have a precipitate okay and it's the silver it's the aluminum hydroxide and what we do here is say which chemical precipitate out and you would say the aluminum hydroxide is insoluble okay now we have to balance this well, three bromides two bromides so we put a three here and a two here two aluminums two aluminums Okay, so six hydroxides, right? Two times three is six. We're going to need a three over here to balance these hydroxides, keeping the what? Polyatomic ions together and three bariums. So I did one for you. Try two, and I would like you to use the rules from table F to finish the rest of one through, let's say, seven. I want you to tell me the formula from lead to chromate and identify the solubility. Okay, good luck.